Okay, hello and good morning, everyone. Welcome to Easy Markets Daily Pitch International with me, that is on Charles Cuss. Today is the 3rd of August, 2023. So, you have welcome, everyone. Welcome to this Thursday's morning session uh, where we're going to have a very quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. But before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendations and should not be considered as such. This material should not be taken as an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. Look, I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest and uh, yeah, I'll disappear from that little left corner. I'll be back in a bit. Okay, so now then, um, also just before we jump into the charts, as usual, uh, let me just quickly mention our Easy Markets website, which you can always check out for more information about us. Uh, so, yep, feel free. Um, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to us and we'll be happy to assist. So, guys, now then, let's jump into the charts. The first one I want to pick up here is Nikkei 225, as always, basically. To be honest, uh, the majority of these instruments are going to be the same, especially the first top um, up to uh, Ripple. But, um, yeah, uh, it's the same uh, as mostly every day. Uh, but to be honest, uh, the, it, is, it is showing every day, you know, it's showing us some sort of interesting activity. So I'm going to pick up on that in case you are trading these um then you know we can reevaluate stuff as as we as you know as as the day goes um so nikkei 225 so yeah there we go we broke the upside line we drifted lower i talked about this and i said too that if we do break this uh, upside line my next target is the 50-day ema and if that gets cleared and we stay below it i will go further south well so far so good and look the react reaction here is a negative due to the um uh, because of the U.S. Uh, issues, um, because of the U.S. and uh, U.S. government and uh, U U.S. authorities and U.S. Uh, and Fitch rating agency, um, as I've talked about yesterday, but I'll pick up on that and that one in a bit again. Uh, but yeah, look, uh, at the moment everything's looking a little bit more bearish than bullish. So my next uh, my next target is the thirty one thousand eight hundred and three zone right here, marked by the lowest point of July. And then we will kind of go from there. Uh, Chinese uh, China 50 index. Look at this beautiful rebound. I talked about this and uh, there we go. So far, so good. I have I said to you before that, look, if we do rebound from this territory, okay, great, more buyers. But there is an, also an opportunity for the buyers to jump in from here, from around this 200-day EMA. And look how well that played out. And uh, now we're seeing a nice rever reversal here. The but um, this uh, 13,250 zone so far is providing that a bit of resistance. So long story short, uh, for now, what I'm going to do is given that I already had my reversal, that's great. That's part of the job done already. But I would like to see maybe a push above this 13,250 level now just for that extra confirmation. But in general, in general, I am kind of cautiously bullish on the Chinese index um, because again uh, well today we also had some data coming out from China and uh, I think it was that yeah the, the services PMIs did surprise um, yeah they came out at um, 54.1 the forecast was for a 52.5 so not only beat the forecast but actually also beat the previous number which was at 53.9 so uh, by two tenths of, uh, of a point so yeah, uh, that's in a way good. That's the positivity we're seeing here. Um, look, let's not rush into anything. Uh, for now, let's uh, stick to what we have here and just go from what we have, right? Um, like I said, we have this rebound from the 200-day EMA. That's great. So now can we get that further move above, higher? And maybe for that, like I said, an extra push above this 13,250 territory would be needed. Um, in terms of the downside, if we start falling below that 13,060 territory, somewhere around here, 
I'm going to lean a little bit more towards the downside. Uh, ASX 200, so beautiful continuation move to the downside, and we fell below this downside line, the upper side of the broadening triangle that I spoke about previously. And I said to you that if we do clear that one, then yes, I'm going to lean towards the 50 and the 100 day EMAs. Well, fantastic move, great result, I would say. And we almost managed to reach my one of my targets here near the 7,215 territory right here, the low, the mark, the low of the 18th of July. Um, so at the moment, I'm just going to aim for that. Um, I'm just going to aim for here. <clears throat> After that, I want to see if we can, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> there we go. I need to clear up my voice a little bit. Um, and then from here, we will see if we can rebound, maybe, you know, go back up or something. Basically, do something like this, where um, a rebound could be possible. Let's say if we do rebound and then um, push back up, maybe we could retest this uh, downside line, which got broken. Um, I'm not getting rid of it yet uh, because, again, somehow it's seems to be quite nice quite doing the job um what i'm gonna get rid of is this one this upside line no longer needed and i think that maybe we could actually uh mark the downside line for now look it's a tentative one don't get me wrong but um i'll just keep it for now here let's see if that's gonna play out or not um oh by the way by the way by the way as always i keep forgetting uh good morning in the chat room good morning everyone I hope you're all feeling nice and uh, refreshed or at least you know if you're not then uh, try to do everything was possible to clear up your mind and try to it's thursday we still have thursday to go through and still friday so just yeah it's uh, quite a busy week i would say in terms of economic data releases and in terms of market movement um it's quite an eventful week to be honest and i think that yes uh it will present itself with nice opportunities um yeah and, and tomorrow oh sorry today and uh and tomorrow as well so uh coming back to this uh, asx 200 so yeah that's the situation and look i think for now um for now the in index will remain kind of mainly subject to movement in the u.s uh, indices so today we had some data from australia let me just double check that our ah, retail sales came out uh those are better um yep exports uh imports yes came out as well so trade balance improved so yeah in general not bad data but um as you can see it's not really affecting it for now um the main thing is what's happening in the dow the s p and the nasdaq so yes the us look um let's see why is it not loading up here my levels are not loading up so just bear with me one moment but anyway uh in the meantime while they load up um oh by the way by the way i can see there in the chat room florence uh okeva good morning to, to good morning to to daredevil dave good morning to to good morning to both guys good morning to everybody else who's tuning in um i hope you're all having a fantastic start of thursday uh so yeah thank you very much for your for your comments uh i really appreciate that but yeah in general thank you very much everybody who's tuning in uh thank you thank you very much for that now uh, thank you for killing your time with me, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> thank you for that. But anyway, Dow. Dow, there we go. My lines came back. Um, so, we're still in the range, right? From the technical perspective, everything is still fine. And look, I talked about this and I'm going to stick to that game plan. I said to you before that in order for me to go higher or lower, I need to see a clearance of this little range where we're currently sitting at um let me just probably mark this one i think yeah this so this little territory right here um there we go uh this is something that i'm watching so i need to get i get out of this box in order to consider the next short-term directional move so for the upside i need to see a push somewhere above this 35,800 zone for the downside i need to see a drop somewhere below this 35,350 territory while we're remaining here i'm just observing the price action um Today, we do have the US ISM uh, services PMI numbers coming out. So keep your eyes on that. And according to one calendar, we see we can see that there's the ISM non-manufacturing PMIs, um, but I don't see it on other calendars. Hmm. 
Uh, let me just double check very quickly. Is that correct or is that not correct? Uh, because it is so. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let me just double check here. I have some services. The services, services, new orders. No, it seems like it's weird that on one calendar I have uh, non manuf Okay, that's. Uh, non-manufacturing PMI, so that's how come. Anyway, you know what? Let's uh, stick to ISM services PMIs for now, because again, this is... Um, and another thing what's interesting, we're in, when is that coming out? Non-manufacturing services. Sorry for that, guys. Okay, this is a little bit weird because one calendar is telling me one thing, the other calendar is telling me the other thing. You know what? I'm going to stick to one calendar thing. Yes, basically keep an eye on the services uh, PMI number. Yep, that's the one that you probably we need to keep an eye, stick to. But yeah, that's that's quite weird. And to be honest, it's not the first time happening. So that's why whenever you look at the economic calendar from one resource, actually try to uh, check it with uh, the second and the third source as well. Because again, you, you might get these... Uh, differences but anyway we'll see how that plays out but of course yes uh, uh, for now the, the game plan is this that I need to see a clearance of this uh, one of the sides of this boxes you know and then um, and uh, uh, just bear with me on JD invest and morning did you receive my email from easy market support if not please check with them and daily pitch and did not mark that. Um, I, I thought it was daily pitch and did mark did mark so sorry, just can you um, can you clarify, JD Invest, please? Uh, uh, can you just clarify this, please? Because I I what exactly did you do? Um, yeah, what did you mark the title of daily pitch and did mark for your attention? Ah, you're talking about the posting of the idea or or what's that? Because I've noticed that there is some sort of issue because. Um, basically um it seems like that whenever i try to even um uh, kind of you know tag myself i mean for some reason it's not picking up i'll have to kind of work on that one because i'm trying to figure out why why is um why trading view is not notifying um that's a good and that's an interesting thing um but yeah um Look, but I, again, can you please just clarify just quickly what did you mean about this? And I'll pick up on that. But yeah, thank you for your message. Um, so yeah, coming back to this S&P 500. Um, so yes, the situation here is that we broke the uh, support zone here, the 4,557. Uh, we cleared it. And uh, yes, now I'm kind of leaning a little bit more towards the downside. Look, in general, yesterday, the whole negativity came in from the... Um, uh, from the the whole Fitch downgrade thing, right? Um, and investors kind of got spooked a little bit. So look, other you know analysts in general, other you know TV hosts, and uh, yes, everybody's trying to say that hey, this is not you know nothing to worry about. And in a way, kind of yes and kind of no. Um, nothing to worry about. Uh, yes, posting for idea for daily pitch, right? Um, I'll. Did you tag easy markets or what did you tag? Because that's like, because look, the the account is that easy markets like this. So if you can see um, kind of like, so if you did you tag uh, just exactly like this, easy markets or how did you tag it? Um, because I think that um, we need, will need to figure this out thing out. Because again, like I said, I tried tagging myself even when I'm throwing out an idea here, and uh, for some reason, uh, Trading View did not notify me that I got tagged myself personally. So um, that's like I said, that's not the, the like I said. If we if I didn't see it, so apologies for that. Because um, just because, like I said, I'm not. I'm not even seeing my own, so my own personal one. So that's why it's, uh, yeah, I'll I'll have to pick up on that because again, it's it's weird, it's weird. Uh, but but in general, in general, I would say thank you, thank you for that. Uh, if you can, I'm trying to figure out a way like how to kind of you know, if I don't know if you can maybe mm, try to message us uh, maybe this way. If you, for example, message. Um, 
uh, message um, easy markets um, that you know with your idea. I don't know if that's gonna be. You know what? I'll get. Yeah, I sent an email from Easy Markets website from. Uh, I sent. Yeah. From Easy Markets website. Ah, uh, okay. Um, hmm. I'll have to maybe check with customer support. Hmm. Okay. I'm just thinking, look, I'm just trying to think of a way to simplify this, but okay, um, you know what? I will look into this. I'll, tr I'll try to get back to you uh, tomorrow in the, in the webinar, but um, yeah, I'll have a look at this. I'll try to find your idea to see if, if, if uh, you know, where it pops out, popped out. Um, and uh, then, yes, I will try to go and kind of pick up on that one. Uh, but I'm just going into... So I'm actually, you know what, JD Invest, I I'm actually like looking at I'm not, sorry, where did you post it? Did you post it on 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 this one on the uh, on Trading View or did you post somewhere else because on J on on your profile, uh, JD Invest One, I don't see any ideas published. So yeah, just a quick question on that. Um, how do you know? Where did you post it? Did you if you posted on Trading View, or did you post it somewhere else? Um, because on Trading View, on Trading View, I don't see your um, any ideas that you've posted. So if I look at your profile right now, but in, um, anyway. Alumali one, I will get to gold in a bit, but you can see this is the big list I need to go through. So guys, uh, yes, I will have to go through. Um, look, JD Invest, um, if you if you're struggling or like let's say if you have anything, you know what? Let's let's take it out outside of this webinar probably. But thank you very much for notifying. Message, um, you can message me. You can find uh, um, me as well in in you know in. Um, if you want to message either Easy Markets or myself directly, um, so yep, um, you can find me on 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 Trading View as well. But just we I, we can go from there. Basically, we can I'll pick up on this and I'll see what's happening. Anyway, uh, Illumilai, yes, uh, gold. Uh, like I said, I'll pick up on gold. This because this is the big list I need to go through. So. Um, nasdaq 100 very quickly so yeah this one's also drifting nicely to the downside um everything's looking quite fine here um why is it not loading up um why my levels are not loading up just bear with me one moment i'll have a sip of tea in that in 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 that moment i think my internet is jumping a little bit uh yeah <clears throat> Yeah, sorry for this, guys. I mean, like I said, I think my internet is a little bit jumpy today. Um, JD Invest, I just saw your message. No, no, no. You have to post it on, on, uh, on Trading View. That's the whole point. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's the whole point. So you post it on your Trading View account. So that's the that's the way. That's this is what I was talking about. So if you post it on your own. This way, you know, you can promote yourself as well. Um, you can show, you know, yourself, your ideas to the world. And uh, then, like I said, and if you tag tag there, um, Easy Markets, then yes. Um, no, not Easy Markets website. No, um, that's not. No, no, no. We we're talking about uh, trading you directly. Okay. Um, so, but yeah. Um, you like I said, if you have any questions, like I said, or anybody else who has any questions, just to can drop uh, some message um, or I, on trading view here or or directly to me on trading view dax the german index there we go boom there we go guys uh drifted nicely to the downside we've cleared this territory and to be honest i'm leaning further south and guess why because we've cleared the 50-day ema and we cleared the lower side of this territory this highlighted zone so for now my target is the upside support line here taken from the low of the 20th of december of 2022 which at the same time is the lower side of the rising veg pattern, which 
I constantly uh, tell you about, talk about, and uh, yes, uh, for now, that's my game plan, which according to the tier, tier rules, uh, rising veggies are, tend to be uh, bearish indication. However, a, a confirmation break of the lower side of the veg would be required first. So um, that's a theory, but um, let's uh, let's wait and see, because again, while we remain inside the pattern, we could continue moving upwards because if the boundaries of the pattern remain intact then yes guys i mean the upside scenario is still possible the FTSE 100 uh the FTSE 100 beautiful check of this downside line i talked about this there we go beautiful wonderful um downside line got tested and i i talked about this so for now what's next for now i'm considering something like this and another thing is actually um, um the fact that uh we found support near the 38.2 percent retracement here on the fibonacci uh also which is near that downside line and everything's kind of aligning nicely so long story short uh for now um if we continue to trade above the 38.2 maybe a bit of a retracement back up here could be possible however in order to consider uh ooh, move the whole fibonacci um, in order to consider uh, some um, lower levels, what I would like to see here is a push back below this downside line. And then, yes, I will go lower. A US dollar, there we go. Been fantastic move yesterday. Look, I've posted an idea. By the way, this is, this is what I'm talking about. So when I've posted the idea here, um this is what you need we, we what you can do as well uh you can throw out your own idea and uh, just kind of put like you see i've tagged myself here and uh I, you can put you know uh, e tag easy markets in there as well so um look i've um what i've said to you yesterday that i'm waiting for this one to clear one of the lines here either because we came, we came very close to this downside line maybe there is a chance that we could finally break it and uh, boom, we broke it nicely to the upside. So everything's working out nicely so far. Um, and uh, yes, uh, the question for now is, can we go higher and test the 200-day EMA? Well, let's put it this way. In general, I am um, trying to be as, as careful as possible. But look, um, maybe a bit of a retracement here could be possible. But as long as we stay above this downside line, I will continue aiming higher. I will continue aiming to the upside and uh, where my next target is the um, the 200 day EMA or maybe even better this 103.2327 zone right there. Um, so yeah, that's my game plan. And uh, for now, I will stick to that. And uh, if I want to aim for lower levels, well, at this point, from the very short term perspective, I will say that I would like to see a, um, a drop below... Um, below this downside line and then i will consider maybe a bit of a move back down because at the same time we could get a drop below the 100 day ema gold gold is wow i mean this is nicely moving to the downside um yep and we broke my key support zone i talked about it and there we go we broke this uh, 1945 46 area we fell below the 100 day ema so everything's in line with the idea uh, like I said, I have mentioned it. So, so for now, I am targeting that 200-day EMA. Yes, I am leaning a little bit more towards the downside. Um, and yes, my next target is going to be this 200-day uh, EMA, which is roughly around the 1917-18 zone, approximately around there. It will shift, it will change, but at this point, I'm just going to aim for that one. Um, as long as we stay below the 1946 zone right here. If we climb back above it, then maybe there's a chance for a move back up. So, yeah, that's the, the, the maybe not very attractive game plan. However, I'm going from what I have. I'm going from what I have and I'm just going to, you know, keep it simple. So, uh, silver very quickly on that one. So, yes, drifted nicely below this 24.04 uh, uh, territory. Okay, that's great. Everything's working out nicely. So... Uh, I said to you that my next target is the 100-day EMA. That's perfect. Um, and you can see my upside scenarios from around here. I said I'm going to take a very conservative approach here in terms of the upside. And then I'm going to... Uh... Um, JD Invest, yes, I'm reading your message. Um, yeah, I know. Uh, it has its flaws. I totally understand that. But, um, you know... 
because I'm kind of delivering the message here um, in the webinar in, in trading view. So we're kind of sticking to trading you for now because again, uh, we're not going to do anything outside uh, outside trading view. This is the whole point that we we are kind of in this little community here in trading view, and uh, you know we're doing everything in here. Uh, nothing outside the um, uh, nothing outside trading view. Sorry, uh, but uh, silver, yes. Uh, so yeah, my next target is the 200-day EMA here, the 23.32 zone, approximately around here, and that's what I'm gonna stick to as long as we remain below the 100-day EMA. If we climb back above it, I'll take a neutral stand. Um, now, in terms of the upside here, uh, maybe, just maybe, not guaranteed, not for sure. I'm not sure about this yet, but maybe um, we could consider some higher levels if we do break this downside line. Now, don't get me wrong; it's a little bit on the tentative side, but Hey, um, still, uh, still a, um, still a trend line. Oil, um, beautiful decline. Look at this beautiful thing. I mean, uh, look, yesterday the dollar kind of maybe you know uh, put this, but I think that may, mainly it was the the Fitch downgrade that you know spooked the market here a little bit, and uh, you know everybody's thinking, oh, the economy is going to be going to get worse, and uh, not much oil will be required. And there we go, boom, beautiful move and beautiful test of this upside line drawn from the low of the 28th of June. So for now, uh, everything's kind of in line here so far because this upside line is still doing a good job. However, if it gets broken, and this is what I said to you that if it gets broken and we fall below this highlighted territory where we're currently sitting at then yes, I will consider a move to the downside towards the 200 day EMA towards that 77 territory again, which previously acted as a fantastic area of resistance. Um, wheat, just a quick update. There we go. Uh, so all the bulls get crushed. Um, the bears are enjoying the moment here right now, and we are drifting lower because as I as I kept on saying this for two weeks already, where I think maybe even more, that there is supply. Politics is one thing, but there is supply. We need some sort of a natural catastrophe or like a natural, you know, uh, uh, nature's fury um, on all this in order to kind of do something with the supply, and then we'll see the price kind of, you know, because look. We, I was picking up on um, soybeans and corn and those were like uh, pushing higher strongly and, and now they're like declining as well. Why? Because suddenly like the weather forecast in the US became better and uh, you know, they, they, they were like more rain that you should follow and kind of good for the crops. And there we go. We saw the huge decline, you know. So whereas before everybody was like, "Oh, it's gonna be too hot, too hot," you know, and blah blah blah, and so you know, and the the price was kind of going higher. So look, uh, at this point, what the way we can play out here with wheat is that um, we broke the upside line here, and we're drifting lower. But as you can see, I'm only aiming for this 622 territory for now, <clears throat> for now. And in general, um, I'm gonna be aiming not exactly for the 622 zone, but or a level but for this area near that because um let me just grab a line because maybe it's gonna find support somewhere oh my colleagues like it uh like it that way but anyway um yes i'm gonna be considering a possible range here so look we we've cleared this we cleared that midpoint of the range nicely we drifted lower so now i can say that I can, i'm gonna get rid of this ups actually no I'm not, I'm not gonna get rid of it yet i'm gonna get rid of it maybe tomorrow uh because i want to see how this is gonna play out for now i'm leaning towards the downside and i'm just gonna, i'm aiming for this lower side of the of this possible range but again some of you might say but hey what about maybe it's a double top here and this is a neckline you're not wrong there either um, because again, if it, that's the case, then yes, we will go further, uh, south and we could aim for that 573 territory or maybe even lower, but look, let's go step by step slowly. Let's not rush into anything. So yes, for now, I will, uh, keep an eye on this, um, for the upside, I would like to see a push back above this midpoint of this range and then aim for higher levels, because even if it climbs back above this upside line, that's no good for me. Um, I would, I would prefer to see a move back above this territory somewhere. 
Bitcoin, there we go, Bitcoin. Look at this tease. I mean, I talked about this yesterday and said don't rush because, I mean, exactly because of this. Exactly because of these like false breakouts and we had a nice move. Yes, the bulls are getting excited, but then the dollar kind of go, went higher, screwed up everybody and like, boom, there we go. The sellers kind of dominated this one and moved nicely. The Bitcoin moved nicely to the downside, fell below that 29,500 zone and also fell below the 50-day EMA. But that's wonderful. Um, what's next? Well, to be honest, I'm still aiming for that 100-day EMA. I know that we already tested it. I get that. We tested the area near that. So, But I have this nice uh, level here as well, the 28,440, which I really like. So long story short, as long as we stay uh, below this... <clears throat> Below this 29,500 zone, I am leaning towards the downside. And we also below the 50-day EMA. If we continue to trade there, I'm leaning towards the downside. <clears throat> now then, <clears throat> XRP. I uh, haven't picked up on this one for quite a while. And look at this. So before I had this uh, descending triangle drawn here, uh, or which could be something like a, a bullish pennant, um and uh yes i mean kind of violated it a little bit so i think it needs to get rid of it i need to get rid of it um and just maybe uh stick to this now we don't have anything for the upside here but um you know what what i'm gonna do i'm gonna mark this i'm gonna mark this little territory um in order for me to go higher so if we do climb back above the 0 0.73, 10, 50, something like that, and stay above it, then yes, I'll go a little bit more to the um, to the upside. For the downside, um, um, if we do drop below the 0 0.6686 territory right here, then yes, I will uh, consider a move lower and move towards that 50-day EMA. So um long story short and uh if we like i said for now i'm just waiting i'm just playing the waiting game yes uh, but if i get that clearance here then yes i'll get a little bit more excited with further declines uh jumping into a few pairs very quickly guys aud usd look looking good uh looking good for the bears i mean i mean look at this we cleared this territory we fell below that 0 0.66 zone i talked about it and uh so i said to you that if we continue to trade above it then yes i will consider a move towards this downside line but if we fall below this my next target will be this uh 0 0.65 64 60 territory somewhere around here and we kind of overshot this okay that's fine look uh as long as we stay below this now uh below this zone I will continue targeting the downside. My next target will be somewhere maybe around here. Um, that's approximately 0. Point, actually, maybe 0. 0.65 territory could be the better option uh, because I don't have a clear level here. So I'm just going to aim roughly for the 0. 0.65 territory as long as we stay below the 0. 0.6560. Um, so yeah, that's my game plan. And then I'll take it from there. Uh, for the upside, I would still like to see a move back above this uh, 0 0.66 uh, zone somewhere around here, and then I'll consider a, move, a larger, a larger correction to the upside because we don't forget that we're still below this downside resistance line, which, by the way, is a little bit on the tentative side. Why? Because uh, we might have something around this. Maybe this could be the better option. So. <laughs> But I'll consider that, like I said, I'll consider a move towards this downside line if we do break this, the first, the steeper downside line. But again, even before that, I need to see a push back over the 0 0.66 territory in order to consider some moves higher. At this point, I'm leaning towards the downside. AUD, AUD NZD, beautiful hold up here. Um, so far, so good. In a way, I would say, you know what? I need to redraw this because in general, I have already reached my 1.0729 zone. Um, we came very close here on uh, what? On Tuesday. Uh, so that's all good. Um, in order to go lower actually i need to see now a break of this uh this highlighted zone here which by the way it could be could be the lower side of this range so if we are in the range then uh yes uh more sellers could join in here so uh if we i mean sorry let me re reiterate that if we are in the range not that more sellers could join in but if we do break the lower side of that range that then more sellers could join in. For now, I would say I'm a little bit on the careful side. Even with the upside, I would say I would like to wait for a push back somewhere above this 1.0840 zone, and then kind of consider a move higher 
within the range to, and, and aiming for the upper side of that range. Uh, this whole area, I will just keep it as neutral and I'm just going to observe the price action. That's it, honestly. I, I, I it, it did my move, so I'm just now chilling. Uh, AUD JPY. So this one is interest, an interesting one because um, in general, yes, uh, you can see that the decline is happening just because, again, everybody's jumping into the yen uh, because lately uh, the stock market is not feeling very well. And uh, yes, uh, AUD JPY is a good indicator of uh, risk on risk off environment. So um, whenever we see a decline um, in the um in the indices, then yes, we also see a decline in AUD JPY. Um, most of the time they correlate, but not always. Of course, there are exceptions, but uh, yes, certainly, like I said, um, for now, uh, for now, look, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to keep an eye on that 93.77 territory right here. If we do fall below it and we fall below the 100 day EMA, then yes, I'll, I'll lean towards the downside. For the upside, I would like to see a push above the 95.86 territory right here and then go higher. Such a move here, such a break will uh, will confirm a forthcoming higher high um, and then potentially more buyers could join in. Yes, we could start already looking on a uh, higher on a break of this downside line, but um, but I just for me personally, I would actually prefer to wait for a push above this 95.86 territory. Uh, just a quick update on CHF JPY. I, I, I'm not going to spend too much time on this one because, uh, again, I'm running out of time. Uh, the same game plan is valid. I mean, if you watch my previous videos, so I'm waiting for this pop here above this 164 territory in order to go higher. Um, for now, I'm just getting a tease here. Not only a pop, but also the body of the daily candle staying above this area. If we if we do stay above this area, then great. More buyers could join in. Uh, for the downside, I need to see a break of this upside line, and then I'll get a little bit more comfortable with lower levels. USD JPY, there we go. Beautiful break. So yesterday, I was kind of hesitant a little bit. I mean, we saw a bit of decline, then we pushed higher again. We broke this downside line, and look... I'm going to stick to my game plan. And uh, I said to you yesterday that if we do pop above that 143 territory, my next target will be the 144. Boom. Good result. Um, good move. Fantastic. Now let's uh, see. Now let's approach this one carefully. Um, look, if we want to go further north, a push above this 144 territory is needed, and then I'm going to aim for the 145. That's why I love love USD JPY for for this, um, you know, because it likes these nice nice numbers. Um, now, in terms of the downside, actually, if we do fall back, and this is where I need to bring my arrow a little bit higher, I think. If we do fall back below the 144 uh, 43 territory right here. Then yes, I'll consider a move back down towards the 142 zone. Uh, USD CAD, uh, this one's beautiful as well. Everything is so far so good. Uh, yesterday we were holding it slightly above this 50-day uh, EMA, and I said to you that as long as we stay above it and we stay above this 1.3254 zone, then yes, I will continue um, targeting the upside. Where my next target is the 100-day EMA, together with the 200-day EMA. So, yeah, okay, good. So far, so good. Uh, look, the 100-day EMA has got reached. Uh, next target is the 200-day EMA. If uh, and I'm gonna slow down around here somewhere. I want to see if uh, you know if we can get a hold up, something like that, and then I'll reevaluate things again. Uh, USD CHF, uh, beautiful move, beautiful push away from this territory. I talked about this and mission accomplished. We reached my target. My target was the 50-day EMA, so that's great. Uh, what's next? Uh, what's next is that, um, look, the next target here is that if we do clear this 50-day EMA and we stay above this 0.8820 territory, then yes, my next target is the 100-day EMA. But I think that this is quite a move here. Also, that 100-day EMA could coincide nicely with this little hurdle. Uh, the area near the 0 0.89, uh, 70, 0 0.7, 0 0.5, something like that. Uh, so 0 0.89 zone in general. So this could be a very nice good target uh also acted as a good area of support previously as you can see here um but 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 i would like to see first that clear break here uh for now i'm just observing the price action and uh another thing that i'm actually observing just i'll try to jump into a monthly chart here yes exactly so um this is what i'm looking at so this is the monthly chart 
And uh, I just wanted to quickly pick up on this. Let me just grab one of these old lines um, and I wanna mark this hurdle. This one here is the lowest point of January of 2021 and uh, the lowest point of 2021 in general. We've, yes, we cleared that level uh, this year or should I say uh, in July and now we're kind of climbing back above it. So long story short, if we uh, continue to trade above this this month, for example, then maybe, yes, we could see, you know, a nice reversal here back to the upside. I'm actually then leaning towards some higher levels, maybe going back to somewhere, somewhere, somewhere here towards this, um towards the 0.90 or maybe above that but again we'll go slowly on this uh but again i'm keeping an eye on this level this month um not only this week but also this month so this little hurdle right here if we stay above it great i'll go higher if we fail and we struggle we see the body of the daily can of the monthly candle struggling to stay above this maybe actually we're not uh we're not uh yet done with the downside so let me just jump back into this as you can see here uh let me just jump back into daily this is what i'm keeping close eye on this is quite an interesting level i'm gonna stick to it and uh oh let me just let me just grab this one market for our future reference there oh there we go so this is like i said this is my uh game plan here and i am gonna stick to this I'm gonna stick to this uh, hurdle this is quite an interesting one and uh yeah let's see where we're gonna end up at the end of august i know the august just started but hey uh, i'm trying to rub that you know crystal ball uh, as much as i can um so yeah uh, like i said but for now from the very short term perspective i'm still keeping an eye on this 50-day ema i want to see how we're going to play out near it gbp usd so 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 of course we finally came to this point now boe interest rate decision today um the expectation is for a hike um for a 25 basis point hike okay um look in general i think that they're going to stick to that and i think that they might go and do that do it what oh excuse me why because their inflation their inflation is at 7.9 the previous reading was um their current interest rate is at five and uh they're i think they're gonna go for an, a rate hike and they're gonna you know push it to 5.25 it will be a very interesting surprise if they come out with a 50 basis point hike but you know we'll see um but again their inflation is still not kind of really dropping that much uh in comparison for example like australia's um so and their inflation boe's inflation target is at uh at two percent so we're almost at eight and four we're almost like four times away from that you know from their target so they i think that they will go for that and the question is will it actually be only the 25. so just like i said let's very let's see how they come out today let's uh Let's see if the BOE stirs up the market a little bit. And uh, look, for now, GBPUSD is drifting lower. Of course, yes, a uh, stronger dollar is di dictating the rules here. But if, like I said, BOE comes out with some sort of a surprise, maybe we could see a reversal, a nice good push back up. So anyway, in, in other words, I'm going to keep, keep an eye on something like this. So I'm going to keep an eye on that uh, 1.2666 uh, territory somewhere around here and also I'm going to keep an eye on that uh, 100 day EMA. So if all this provides good support somewhat, yes, then maybe a bit of a rebound here back up could be possible towards that 50 day EMA. Um, so, yeah, that's going to be the situation here. Um, in order to go uh, higher, of course, a break of this downside line is needed. But but even then, I will I think I might uh, readjust stuff here. So at this point, I'm, I'm leaning a little bit more towards the downside but um again i'm going to be very careful near this 100 day ema i'm only aiming for that for now gb cad uh just wanted to quickly update you on this one i talked about it and i'm waiting for this one to get out of this coiling up moment so it's getting i mean it, it did already get out but it still ended up staying inside so we're still 
coiling up. We're getting into very, very uh, strong squeeze here. So let's see if BOE, BOE will drive this one out of the out of this. If we do clear the lower side of this triangle, my next target is this upside line drawn from the low of the 10th February, which is around at 108 EMA. For the upside, I need to see a pop somewhere above this uh, 1.70, uh, zone, somewhere around here, and then I'll go a little bit to the upside. PNZD, just a quick update on this one. So yes, I'm, I'm gonna not going to spend too much time on this because I've talked about it and I've mentioned that I'm watching this kind of range and within that range, we have an ascending triangle forming. So in a, in a way, everything's kind of pointing to, towards the upside. We're, we're flirting with that key resistance barrier. The Before entering this range, the prevailing trend was to the upside. So according to TA rules, this should break to the upside. However, we have seen this happening in the opposite direction. So if... It's it at the moment it seems too good to be true. Everything's but it, but I have this rule that if it's too good to be true, it's too good to be true. So let's not rush into anything. Let's wait for the BOE to come out. Let's see what's going to happen there, and then maybe they can you know push it out of here, and uh, we could go further north. Uh, if they struggled, and yep, uh, look, if we we start breaking this upside line, I will consider maybe a move lower. But only also if um, we break the 50-day EMA because some, somehow this area near that 50-day EMA is proving to be quite an, an interesting one. Uh, GBPJPY. Um, so GBPJPY, um, the question here is can we remain above this downside line which we broke? So in a way, I'm still going to stick to the upside as long as we stay above this downside line. If we start falling back below it, I'm going to lean towards some lower levels. Simple as that. Uh, so that's my game plan for now. I'm keeping an eye on this territory here, this 179.93 zone, which coincides nicely with the 50-day EMA. And if that gets cleared, then yes, uh, certainly further declines are possible. Uh, so Euro CAD very quickly on this. Uh, I haven't looked at this for quite a while, as you can see by the skewed uh, arrows here. But uh, we shifted a little bit, so now let's. Uh, and in general, this worked out. I said to you that if we break this upside line, we'll go lower towards its EMAs. And uh, yes, we're currently sitting there. Uh, we're oscillating around those EMAs, so everything worked out nicely. Let's remove the drawings and start fresh. Now, um, I really want to draw an upside line but I really don't like it. So I think I'm going to draw, from the short-term perspective, I mean, but I think I'm going to draw this. I think this is much better, and I think that somehow this is doing a better job than the shorter-term one. So, okay. Now, we are still we still remain above the subside line, so that's good. This one is drawn from the low of the 25th of August of last year. Um, so if we want to go higher, I would say, yes, there is a good chance we could, but I think for me personally, I would like to see maybe somewhere a push above this territory, uh, roughly. This 1.4633, 34 zone, something like that. If we do climb above it, then yes, I'll consider a move a little bit to the upside here. Uh, maybe even back to this um, to this territory somewhere near this 1.4881, 82. Uh, and then we'll kind of go from there. So that's going to be the game plan. Um, but again, I need to see a push above this territory first, this 1.4633. For the downside, guess what? A break of this upside line for me is required. And then I will consider a move lower. Initially, I will target the 208 EMA because it did do a good job previously. It acted as a good area of support. But if that gets uh, cleared, then yes, uh, we will start. I will, I will start looking at some of these levels right here. Uh, and then we'll just take it from there. I'll take. I'll keep an eye on these lows of of June, the lowest point of June, or and the, uh, I think not nah, not the lowest point of July, not yet. No, the lowest point of June. That's going to be my next target if we break this upside line. Uh, Euro GBP, one of my unfavorite pairs, uh, probably the most unfavorite pair, but uh, so far it's doing what I'm what I asked it to do. Uh, because I said to you, like on Tuesday, I said if we do clear one of the sides here. Uh, because we're kind of get we were getting into a bit of a squeeze. I said if we clear one of the sides, then I'll consider the next short-term directional move. But um, initially, if we do clear this downside line, I'll aim for the 50-day EMA. We got that, and then I said that if we do clear this 50-day EMA, my next target is the 100-day EMA. So far, so good. As long as we stay above the 50-day EMA, I'm aiming for the 100-day EMA. For the downside, I need to see a break of this upside line, and then we could go lower. 
Euro USD, uh, Euro USD, uh, yes, finally broke the upside line and we drifted below this 1.0977 territory. I spoke about this and I said to you that my next step, ne next level, yesterday I said, I said this, my next level will be the 100 day EMA. Ideally, ideally, I'm targeting this, but my next target will be the 100 day EMA first and then we'll see. Um, so far, so good. We're getting a hold up here. And uh, the question is, can we go further south? Well, look at this. If we do break the 100 day EMA and stay below it, I'll go lower. Yes. If uh, we want to consider some higher levels on this one, I would say I would like to, I will take a bit of a conservative approach and I'll wait for a move back above this crossroads of these two trend lines. And then, yes, uh, and then I'll consider some moves higher but at this point i'm leaning a little bit more towards the downside but i'm very being very careful right now because again we're getting a whole nice hold up near the uh 100 day ema and again let's see what this little fella will do today uh because again first we'll have the boe which okay might not be relevant here but um then we'll have the u.s services pmis and also the initial and continuous jobless claims don't forget about that that's every thursday so yeah for now, I am, like I said, I'm targeting the, let me let me put this error a little bit. So I'm targeting the uh, one the 200 day EMA first, and then we'll go from there. So jumping back into your USD. So that means that maybe there could be some more downside to come here on this pair. Um, if USD, uh, US dollar continues to push higher. Um, so yeah, guys, that's it for this session. I really, really thank you for your patience, for your time, for your views, for your comments, for your uh, rocket ships in there. Uh, not likes, but rocket ships. So yep, thank you very much for that. Uh, guys, honestly, I really appreciate it. And I hope, for me, the most important that you find it useful. If it's not useful, then uh it's it's no good but um i hope you found it useful uh thank you very much i really like i said once again i really appreciate your time if you want to catch me tomorrow morning as always six o'clock gmt time uh tomorrow don't forget nfp day uh maybe maybe could be interesting you know uh maybe it will be interesting we'll see um yeah but for now guys i hope you'll have a fantastic trading day don't over trade there devil dave you're welcome i can see you there uh don't over trade have your stop losses in place risk uh only what you can afford to lose and everything will be fine have a beautiful trading day and i'll see you tomorrow six o'clock gmt time bye bye Continue to please the trading gods, subscribe to our channel for a blessing.